just take a break for that portion. I feel like Christ. the rest of it. You can skip over six, six <laughs> A and go to six B and all that beyond there. As soon as I get a car drive, like I'm going to Sorry, It's like my own place. In my life, I wouldn't be home till she's already in bed. <laughs> Please open the window. Okay, with that. Okay, to get, get the latest update. Okay. Ready? Uh, good evening. Um, welcome to the Cortez City Council regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, October 13th, 2020, from 7 30 p.m. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting. City Council Chamber and the other council members are on Zoom. Uh, I call this meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Can you stand, repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. The uh, first item in the agenda is a consent agenda. The listing under consent agenda is a group of items to be acted on with a single motion and vote. This agenda is designed to expedite the handling of limited routine matters by City Council. The mayor will ask a citizen or a council member who wishes to have any specific item removed from the consent agenda for discussion. Either the public or a council member may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda at that time prior to council's vote. The first item is the approval of the work session and regular meeting minutes for September 22nd, 2020. Second is uh, approval of the expenditures voucher of October 13, 2020. Item C is approval of a renewal tavern liquor license for Purple Sage Rib Company and Saloon LLC DBA Purple Sage Rib Company located at 2591 East Main Street, Cortez. Okay, uh, do I hear a motion? Um, the, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as it reads. I'll second. Okay. Hunt Aye. Zero. Aye. Zero. Aye. 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 There are no presentations. Uh, public hearings. First item is uh, ordinance number 1278, series 2020, Associate Planner Neva Connolly. All right, good evening, Council. I am going to share a screen, so give me a moment, please. There we go. Okay. All right, so the property owners of 25 South Elm have applied to the, for their property to be listed on the city's register of historic structures, sites, and districts. This property was surveyed for historic designation in 2019 as part of, as a, as part of a grant from the State Historic Preservation Office. And I do apologize, there's an error in your staff report that calls it the Colorado Historical Society, and that's um, it was from the State Historic Preservation Office. The city has received eight of these grants, which require no match. Um, this property at 25 South Elm was surveyed by Woods Canyon Archaeological Consultants. The survey consultant found the house was eligible for local designation. However, between the end of the survey and the nomination application, the property's facade was altered. It was determined by the state that the changes would make the property ineligible for state and national listing, but that the local listing would be up to the local historic preservation board. The board did review the property and historic nomination application during their September 2020 meeting and did recommend forwarding the application to council for approval onto the city register. 
The board determined the property's history as a McPhee house and the low rate photography studio showed character, interest, and value as part of the heritage and cultural characteristics of the development of Cortez. Um, so I actually, I really don't have too much to add to this. Um, the Historic Preservation Board did forward this um, to council for approval. Um, so they do feel that it meets the uh, city of Cortez land use code. Um, I am open for any questions if you have any. I don't have any. Any questions down here? Any Zoom members, any questions? You guys are good. And then no, qu no, no question. None here. Okay. Uh, there's no other questions or comments. Uh, do we hear a motion on this item? Mayor, lady, we need to open the public hearing, please. Oh, yes. The public hearing. This is a final. Correct. Final reading. Uh, anyone in the public wish to speak on this item? 25 South Elm Street, historic place of nation. See none? Okay. Now can I have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve the inclusion of the structure located within the Cortez original town site to be included in the City of Cortez Register of Historic Structures, Sites, and Districts, specifically the house located at 25 South Elm Street through the approval of Ordinance Number 1278, Series 2020. Second. Medina. Yes. Gossie. Aye. 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 Russ Machen will uh, be the announcer. Uh, I just wanted to put some guidelines down. Uh, Russ will uh, introduce the topic. Uh, then the, the two uh, FBO applicants will give their presentations. The committee, the airport committee, which is comprised of the city manager and two uh, city council people, they will give their uh, findings from the interview with the FBO candidates. Uh, we're not open for public comment now. We've received many emails, letters, uh, phone calls, uh, people in public. Uh, so uh, we will uh, um, make a motion on this item after the uh, committee uh, gets your presentation and then we'll uh, move on from there. So, uh, Russ, could you go ahead, please? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe we're still experiencing uh, technical boot up problems. I'm keeping my eye out, so we might want to move to 6B, which is also uh, my issue. Okay. Okay, we've got a slight change. We're working on that. TV presentation. The IT people are working on that. So uh, we'll put this item on hold for until they're finished and we'll go on to uh, item number B, uh, that's the transfer of airport land lease due to hangar sale. Uh, airport manager Russ Machen. Go ahead, Russ. Uh, as happens from time to time, a hangar sells at the airport, but the land that it sits on is airport property. They enter into, when they construct the hangar, they enter into a lease arrangement with the city with a land lease arrangement. And when the hangar sells, they, you have to have a new owner assume the lease. So essentially, the same gentleman who we went through this 11 months ago uh, who purchased the hangar. 
and assume that he is now selling to him. So Mr. Morris is selling to Mr. Ingram, and Mr. Ingram will assume Mr. Morris's uh, land lease. That's essentially it. Okay. Uh, sounds like a pretty straightforward yeah. operation. Uh, any comments from the council or questions? Zoom council? Any questions, comments? Seems straightforward. Yeah. I don't have any. Nor do I. Okay, we need down here. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Uh, can I have a motion on this uh, item, please? I'll make a motion <clears throat> to approve the transfer of the airport land lease from Dan Morris to Jared. I'm not going to butcher his last name. In <laughs> Ingram. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Second. Sarah. Hi. Vincent. Hi. Lena. Hi. Trini. Hi. Yazi. Hi. Lady. Hi. Thank you. We good. Okay. Okay. We're ready for six eight. Okay, we're good to go with the FPO. Uh, presentation. Uh, Russ, you want to proceed, please? Okay. Uh, the current FBO five year contract is expiring December 31st of this year. And we did receive outside interest to compete with them uh, many months ago. So we went through the request for proposal procedure and we received interest uh, during the advertising period. We started July 31. There are five entities. Uh, in the end result, we received three submittals. The three submittals were opened at 5 o'clock, August 31st, for the city manager, John Doherty, myself, and city clerk, Moon Smith, in attendance. The firm submitting with Cortez Flying Service, current FBO, Red Red Radiation from Inverness, Florida and Colorado Highland Helicopter from Durango, Colorado. Uh, the committee reviewed the uh, proposals over a week or so time, and then they met on September 10th, and they uh, discussed the various proposals. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, John Doherty, Amy Hopkins, and David Rainey are the uh, selection committee. Um, attorney Mike Green and myself were also present and we uh, inputted as requested. Uh, the, court, the Colorado Highland Helicopter uh, firm was eliminated from consideration. I uh, felt that their experience was uh, lacking in operating full, uh, full service FBO uh, because they had no prior experience operating it. And uh, although their their rates for the rent and the fuel flow which fee were very competitive. Uh, there is only one criteria in which uh, we make the choice. So uh, they are also short on uh, their financial civil, which left us in the dark as to where they should financially be capable uh, to move forward. So the committee uh, decided that Cortez Line Service and the Inverness Florida Group were both qualified to move to another stage, which was the interview process, which occurred in the morning of September 14th. And uh, as was mentioned, the committee members will share their impressions from uh, those interviews. Uh, within the contract coming up, there are several options uh, for council to consider. That's the next portion of my memo, page two. And these involve marketing, website establishment, building maintenance, fuel incentive programs, uh, an optional storage space, and fuel tank insurance. Uh, other than the optional storage space and the fuel tank insurance, which are going to have to be in there in some fashion, uh, the others are up to the council whether or not they want them in there, one of them, all of them, whether they want it to be a monthly enforcement program, quarterly. Uh, the dollar amounts are flexible. It's entirely up to you folks to discuss. These were 
just a draft list for discussion purposes. The uh, fiscal impacts going forward, we used uh, the base year of 2019, our last full, complete, non-COVID-19 year for comparative, comparative purposes. And we did uh, compare all of the proposed fuel rates and rental rates uh, for a full year in 2019, based on 2019 fuel sales. And as you can see from the chart on page three, Cortez Line Service uh, would have produced $29,769 of uh, in revenue to the airport. Right Rudder would have produced $30,943, an additional $1,174. And we included Colorado Highland in this uh, factory and just to show that they were the, the high bid monetarily. Uh, however, as I mentioned earlier, it's not the sole criteria. And when it comes right down to it, $3,600 or $1,100 is really not enough of a sway point in either direction. So it's more of a uh, who could put forth the best strategy in a forward-looking uh, presentation that would be advantageous to the community and uh, the airport. And that's basically the high points of my memo. I'm sure you've all read it. And the recommendation of the uh, airport selection committee was to approve light rudder aviation for FBO services. So we'll be making, uh, they'll be making presentations to you shortly. So, Ms. Mayor, I uh, turn it back over to you. Thank you, Russ. Uh, which, uh, uh, Applicant is going to present first. That's your call, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, can, can we have the CFS presentation first, please? I think that he's going to go. Could you state your name and uh, address and, and who you're representing, please, Greg? Yes, my name is Greg Trail um, with Cortez Line Service. My address is 25559 Road N.6 Loop, Cortez, Colorado. Yeah, begin? Yes. Okay. Uh, again, my name is Greg Tripp. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, on behalf of what this life service our team feels very strong. We have a lot to talk about. And we try to tear everything down so that we wouldn't overwhelm you today. But there is a lot to talk about. There's, there's a lot of talk here. So, um, one thing, can you, I guess you can all see. Um, I guess one thing, I, as we were preparing this, uh, realizing that I don't hear me all because it's a pretty heavy decision to make. It affects a lot of people. We have 60 family members in this community that are directly affected by Cortez Flying Services employees, their families. And uh, part of that also is made more difficult by the fact that aviation in that level, in FBO, and the intricacies that are going along with it, is a pretty complicated and regulated area. And very few people can really understand it unless they've lived it for a great period of time. Um, one of the things we'd like to talk about is focus on the So, our goal is, is because of all this uh, that we've been working on to try to get everything uh, calibrated and be able to present all to you. Uh, we want to make sure that we were talking to clarify the differences between the strengths of Cortez Flying Service and what we perceive to be um, the offerings of Light Rudder. Uh, so, one of the things uh, 
that we also do is we trust that you be in our city council. We'll, we'll choose wisely uh, for the greater good of Cortez long term. Um, so what's at stake? Uh, we've got an unknown versus a known. Uh, we've got a group that uh, has had a 135 certificate for the requirements for the uh, from the very beginning since they existed versus a group that had to go with the broker in the uh, last minute to uh, to form that requirement. Um, we've got familiarity with our unique operating characteristics out here, the, the safety issues, the, the weather, um, just the environment of our, of our aviation area versus a group that comes out of Florida at sea level without the same kinds of conditions we've got. We got a group that admits its primary purpose is to meet the request from the aircraft supplier. We'll talk about that in a little bit. To find a Western United States sales point. And the reason they're here is because they can get into this one cheaper. Um, we kind of went through a little bit of the background for us here. And I just want to try to get it real quick because we have a perception on this too. We had another party that was interested in obtaining the fuel concession. That kind of kicked everything in motion. Of course, this flight service had renewals every five years for years and years. Um, so it went into open solicitation. I guess there was five interested, four bidders showed interest in it. I, I got four, it's five, I guess. But three submitted, and as he said, the original was thrown out for an incomplete proposal. That left two of us, right rudder and Cortez Flying Service. Um, Cortez Flying Service was notified. Going into the interview process, that we were by far the leading proposal based on what we had submitted. Um, leading up to the interview, um, we were told that uh, only two people could attend the interview up till the very last minute. It was relaxed that allowed three people in. We didn't have enough time to rally a couple of people. So the two that we probably thought would be most likely to go, most appropriate to go, were the two principals who worked as flight service, stayed in the body. And between the two of them, they're the best mechanics out there. Best by far the best. But they're not the type of people that blow a lot of smoke and they'll throw a lot of fancy stuff at you. They're going to call it straight. And that's what we like as pilots. I'm an end user of their services. We don't like them to go give you any kind of inflated commitments, anything they know they can't keep is a policy. So the last minute that was accommodated. So Eric and I can attend Eric and I do the business development. In the marketing program. Well, we're on the best of business. Like I said, their, their delivery was real direct now. I'm so disappointed that the thing went the way it did in the interview process. Uh, we set out to do what we put in writing because that's what we're about. We put in our proposal that we were going to do certain things and we're doing them now. And we'll show you that in a minute. Um, so, a little bit about Cortez Fine Service. Um, it originated this 19th. In 1948, such a flight service at the old location, which a lot of people don't know about, near the new location. In 1953, kind of at the same time, it was moving over to the present location, and it became Cortez Flying Service. They actually did this privately. Eventually, turned the facility, built the facility, eventually turned it over to the county, eventually turned it over to Cortez City. We've seen airlines come and go. A lot of people have been around for a long time, seen that also. But we've also seen one of the FBOs come and go out there. Region. Similar situation to what you're facing right now, which might go at risk. We've had a third 135 certificate, like I said, since they, they first came up at, by the FAA. We had a Phillips 66 distributorship since the very beginning. And we still believe that's the best fuel quality out there. Um, and to add on to it, we have a Ribbon 66 flavor, but we're also adding the other side of that, which is making use of uh, current marketing platforms. You've heard the buzzword Web2. You've all read the letters that float around. Web2, that's that's nothing that we're not already doing. I mean, it's, it's just interactive in multiple platforms. We're already doing it. Um, just a little bit more. We've got four trucks, two out gas, two jet. They're available 24 to 7, uh, 365 days a year. We should call out back David lives right on the field. And he's within five minutes of responding to needs on the facility. The owners themselves are on site working, or the boots on the ground, 100% best of the responsibility for the success of the, of the customer. And we've never been late on a payment 
to our landlord in the city of Cortez. And I guess you could ask the competitor if they've ever had a situation otherwise. Um, a little bit about the team. This is the core group here. David, Bobby, Larry, Mike, Aaron, and Pete. Uh, Bob, Bobby is the president of Cortez Wine Service. He's been in the business for 49 years serving. He's had eight years as an owner operator for Cortez Wine Service to the unfortunate passing of uh, Bill Moore, who we had previously, but they were working there the whole time. He's a Vietnam veteran, had a doctor mechanic. He's got his AMT license in 72, director of maintenance 135. He's qualified to work on all aircraft, and he's been a resident of Cortez since 1954. David, vice president, the other one, 43 years in my Cortez Fine Service, eight years as an owner operator. My service technician while still in high school. I knew him in high school, you're in the same high school class. He's been an AMT since 85, qualified to work on all aircraft, lives adjacent to the airport, and he also provides an element of security on the airport. Whenever there's an issue, he's responded to those. He's helped coordinate all those responses. Been a resident his whole life. Okay, so here's Larry, the chief pilot. He's uh, Cortez Flying Service, he's 21 years with the service. Obtained an initial license in Cortez and has over 7,500 hours now. But the cool part is he's got intimate, in, intimate knowledge of every part of this region, every backfield landing strip, every emergency you know, location that he can set down when he needs to. And he provides charter and has for years with these guys. He's got experience in non flying, which is very important in this area. Um, he's passionate about flying still, which is cool. And, uh, no incidents or violations in this entire run. He's been in the president of the board since 1963. Mike Kelso, he's lead line service technician for this line service, 45 years in the airport operations. He started in 1975 on college, served in the Air Force, previously worked at four large airports and brings that experience in customer service flair with him. He's capable of fanning a lot, high volume traffic, really has a customer service focus, always smiling, and uh, he's been a resident since 93 here. And then here's Aaron. This is kind of interesting because Aaron, when Bobby took over his owner, Aaron started here with him. So Aaron and I work together on the book, PP, or the book of the multimedia. Aaron does the books, and uh, we, we kind of collaborate on the business development. But he developed the web and you know, keeps the website updated and is working with other social uh, media such as Facebook, other Facebook page, all that's rolled out. So, um, but he also keeps that website updated all the time. Like almost daily, there's things going in there. And also, it's something you don't take a look at when you get a chance. There's a lot of things related to history and whatnot there that are better than history. Like the Rose of Cortez, he actually grew up in the Then we have Pete, who's our lead flight instructor, 40 years in aviation. Did a lot of work down at Glendale. I'll try to move this a little faster here. Uh, understands that feels because he was part owner of that deal. He knows how this all happens. He's got over 3,900 flight hours. Hangers a Rockwell commander down here now. And he's been a resident since 95. And then here's our new guy, Ryan Lyons. He's just transitioning into a flight uh, instruction. He has caught on our Western curriculum with a professional pilot up there. And he'll be joining us pretty soon as an as a assistant pilot to be. And then just a little bit about myself. I'm, I was uh, always under this, uh, this area for my aviation experience. I got my initial here and through my CFAA, I got my flow plane rating. And uh, I started four businesses in Cortez and I helped promote them and grow them. They're still in, in operation. And uh, so that was part of the reason that I was requested to come aboard a while back with Cortez Flying Service because I believe in what they do and I think I can have a team of trial. So, yeah. um, so here's the sum of it we got 240 years of total aviation experience in this team. We've got 130 years serving Cortez at Cortez Flying Service. Our AMP team, just Bobby and David, they total 92 years of serving. Perfect safety record. And that includes air taxi charter, the mechanical side of it, fueling, environmental, the qualified and experienced all the aircraft that are clear in this game and was required to operate safely in this particular environment. The property resource right now, and we also have a pension reserve in every area that we can pull that need. We added key components of additional responsibilities and growth to really start pushing ourselves to grow and do it the right way. 
We're all passionate about aviation in a specific market. We're talking Cortez and the region that we've been working in. And we're here to see them serve this community. So yeah, we've had no standards Cortez adopted in the 90s, ever since they were adopted. So mm -hmm. uh, some things that they offered at first were four, four service trucks, two at gas and fuel for our jet fuel. Uh, we've got a bulk fire discount. Uh, we already work with the airlines that we're doing with the team currently. Uh, dollar a gallon discount. We've got a local pilot discount at 20 cents a gallon. And a further discount with Bill's credit card for 10 cents a gallon. We've got a wings point program. We're getting two points per gallon additional. Uh, the thing that's a concerning to us a little bit is that after 67 years, Red Rider is proposing to bring in a group called Type that's a shell distributor. And that's a logistically potentially higher price fuel because there's not much of that out there. It's mostly these in this brand and we good disruption service. We're a little bit concerned about that. Air taxi charter. We're 135 compliant. We have our own 135 certificate. We don't have to go out with another group to try to get it. Um, of course, Larry, Larry and others that have uh, worked as charter pilots here have flown for Superior Oil and Nielsen <coughs> Engineering Construction Group 40, Mountain Gravel. US oil and gas and many others around the area. And a lot of this involves the kind of flying that happens around this part of the country where you got to drop in behind the research, you got to talk about it, you got things that you have to watch out for and understand around right here. It's not flat and it's not easy. But we, we've done it for the sake of the Plus, my spike rate. There's a lot of pilots and diminished demand. We know that if you look at the relative websites, not everybody's saying there is, but we know there's a glut. Got a, a stepson that's dealing with that right now. He's a airline trainer. We understand the Cortez market because of its favors customized programs. And our website is one of the starting points. If you go to our website, fill out the form, there's a survey there that says, Why do you want to get a pilot's license? So you fill that out, and it goes to uh, Pete. We start an interview process, figure out how we build the program for you. That goes with a lot of the other stuff. But check out the website, it's really interesting. Um, we're completing the installation of the new engine of the primary training aircraft. So that's what I want to say too. So I've got the inside of the on there. It's a really good airplane. And we're going to get a brand new engine and have a lot of, a lot of time in, the, in front of that engine. So, um, so again, the, the Gallagher dates are open now uh, to start building uh, time for that in that airplane to start in mid November. So here's some of our success stories. Some of these names may be familiar to you. Gary Rossi came through here. He was a lineman, traded, uh, worked for Flying Pine, ended up in the Marines, flying that force at 15, went to Top Gun. He went through the airlines and he's since retired. But he started out gas and airplanes. Kel Kelvin Elliott, whose initial pilot here, he's in the airlines. Eric Kipscher, I'm sure, vice president, used to fly with them all. But the initial pilot, uh, he, he did a lot of aerial photographer. He flew through Sky West and then, then United. Dan Dunn, the initial pilot, Big Sky Airlines up in Montana, and then there, Calvin Reed was initial pilot, did military Blackhawks, 206 on covers, King Airs. Kip Reynolds, some of you know him, he did a lot of charter flying here. Got his initial here, flew that air, turbo air commander from Denver, New Mexico for a long time. And then Larry Royce, Royce the initial pilot, Cortez Flying Service Charter Airlines. And over the years, there's a bunch of these. This is just a small sample. Um, some of the notable events that have happened, at least, aren't all good. So, the tragic incident of uh, Officer Claxton's murder and the subsequent manhunt that lasted. We were all involved with that uh, in, in a lot of ways. Visitations that have come through by Neil Armstrong, Henry Kissinger, Nelson Rockefeller. We had a YouTube emergency landing here years ago. Uh, there are major fire events that we've all seen. Uh, Mason, Mason Verde has had a couple of major ones. In in a lot of nearby areas. So we, we're right there servicing the, the aircraft, providing what they need to keep things going and have a successful run at it. There was a round the world bonanza flight where Jack Rod Carol's Denim started here, went around the world, came back to here, and a lot of those guys were the ones that got their plane ready for that ride. They made it. They found a lot of stuff that needed to fix it quick before they took off, too. Um, and then, of course, everybody remembers 9 11. I was flying, I was in the air on all of them. I was coming back to Cortez. We had aircraft stranded because of that instance. But we've all been in this, we've been in this together as a community. 
Um, okay, so business development initiatives. We have a little tag because they're saying, hey, we're old school. We're not doing anything. It's just a bunch of guys are complacent. We're complacent. This we're not. We're very, very solid. Look at what we're doing. And, and this is, we knew that we had to do this to get updated, but we're good at it too because we have the foundation to work with. We have something to leverage. We've got a web presence that's continuously being updated with information, features, additional features for interactive experiences, how to get started on the and all that kind of stuff, plus a lot of history articles, things about Cortez that a lot of people said a lot of interaction. We'll be using more and more of the social media platforms, but not proactive uh, ad campaigns. We started working with, or at least initiate the, the, the process of working with Mesa Verde Country to promote the area. We think that's going to work well. Working with local business to promote package deals, referrals, and seasonal specials. Um, we're currently in discussions with partnering at the FBO and Bozeman, one of the hottest markets there is in the country. If you ever go up there, the real estate's unbelievable. But they have a very similar setup to what we have as far as terrain requirements for flying, common interest in the people that go to Montana and Cortez area with regard to hunting and outdoor activities and anything. And there's a lot of synergy potential that we're working on. Um, we've also completed negotiations for return of rental car service. And the other thing on that is we have enterprise rental car at the airport. Now. We've got it. Um, we have to call ahead to get it there. So the next step is walk on a walking service. That's what we're working on now. So now to be able to get off the airplane, walk to the counter, there's a car deal with food. And that's what the next step is. It's coming soon. Um, so watch this part this flying service. Build 135, you don't have to park. We've been in the FBO business for 67 years. And um, our opponent has been in an establishment for two years. Choosing Port Test Flying Service is not an obvious choice. From our only, it's not only obvious from an operational and safety standpoint, but you're also consistent with by local. And by the way, there was a Facebook thing that floated around my city government today about buying local. I mean, that's out there. It's part of what we say. It's part of what we intend to do. So that's what we trust you will do. You will avoid ending the life of several lifetime residents in their families. So I'm saying, like I said, close to 60 people that depend on directly or indirectly what they've established over decades at Cortez Flying Service. It's the only company that met exceeded the minimum requirements for qualified and proposed on this renewal without waivers, allowances, or late hour formation of partnerships on paper to meet the check boxes. We're adding additional fuel incentives. We're still negotiating for more. We can pass those on to the pilots. We have relationships with other Cortez area businesses. We want to keep growing those and working those. We're also looking at strategic partnerships and relationships with outside businesses that we believe would benefit Cortez in the area. So this is our community. Our friends and families planned out with concern with their safety. And we've always been committed to the safety of our, our passengers from the beginning. We'll always be more committed to this, um, to this community than anybody from the outside of other people. We took the initiative to pull our clientele to see what they wanted in that deal. And you'll, you saw the result of some of that from all the letters of recommendation that just kind of happened out of that. Um, so those were submitted. Cortez is our home. It's not a checkbox for a sales commitment to a supplier of an airplane. It's always been our preferred destination. So we did a little bit of late work just because it's good to know what we're dealing with. So Monarch Air Group is the, is the 135 rover, and they are a rover, they're not just a park. Um, you can call, anybody here can call them to get a flight. These are the cost comparisons that we did yesterday. This is uh, Cortez Flying Service in Green, round trip, uh, Cortez Albuquerque, Cortez Salt Lake City, Cortez Phoenix, and Cortez Denver. And that would be in San Diego. The green numbers are the, uh, our round trip prices. The red numbers are what you would see with the broker group that they've selected as the 135 sold. Brace yourselves for a cost increase. Okay, a little bit about Panthera. They're going to talk about this, and then I'll probably have some of them wrong, so I apologize again for that if I got any of this wrong. But it's four main airplanes made in Slovenia. Um, it, they've stated in a letter that this is their primary reason for seeking Cortez. That did not sit well with us. Our primary reason for being Cortez is to serve the whole aviation community. It's not yet proven, 
Um, they haven't sold one to date. I may be wrong on that, but recently they haven't even sold one. Um, it was only tested in 2020. It's got about a $650,000 base sticker on it. So who in the hell is going to buy that in Cortez when it's three times the cost of the home? And there's not, it's not a big market in Cortez. And if you draw somebody in to buy it, they say they'll, they'll fly for 25 hours. Your fuel flowage fee is going to be 39 bucks for 25 hours of flying. That's all because it only burns like 10, 12 gallons an hour. So it's still in development. Um, so the question you have to ask yourself is why would anybody unveil a brand new airplane that's supposed to represent the entire South, Central, North America, or whatever West, Western United States? Why would they do that in Cortez? There's obviously other places that would be a bigger population center, closer to commercial airlines that would be a better spot. Well, we believe it's because you're offering this opportunity cheap. So be careful. Points to ponder. What happens when they fail? This, off, this often happens within 18 months. There's been a lot of people around here that have a lot of experience that have seen this happen. Um, what protects the city? What's the penalty for failure? And they can pull out anytime they want if things aren't working. And then what do you have? You've displaced an entity that's been here as one of the two oldest businesses in Cortez and saw it. What happens when they find a more simple location of Tunnel the Airplane and choose to relocate? Where does the revenue they generate go? Business is based in Florida. We're based here. Every penny that we earn stays in this local economy. We're doing it now. I mean, the things that we promise, we're doing it now. It's in writing in our proposal. It's an action right now. We're not promising you after a couple weeks after the first of the year when we get the agreement, we're going to start. Um, we talked about other partnering opportunities and that kind of thing. But the other thing is, you're not going to have a disruption of speech. You're not going to have a learning curve. You're not going to have the risk of safety and that kind of thing that comes along. So in closing, you can choose to buy local. You can choose to buy better known. You can choose to buy a perfect safety record. You choose a group that knows the local aviation community intimately and all of its unique conditions. And you have 55 deeply rooted family members that are really hoping that you'll make the right decision. You have a solid foundation, decades of building. It's a, it's a organic term mountains, or organic growth. It's solid. You don't have to borrow it at the risk. You've got existing relationships already in place with the airlines, air ambulance. That's to change out um, fuel providers and the private aviation community. I mean, these guys can speak for them. Um, it's already in motion, like I said, the web and social media, media the car rental services, the fuel incentive program, and we're recruiting on every one of those as we speak. Um, increased networking with local business that we're really looking forward to that. I mean, especially as we come out of this COVID thing. Um, and we fully need requirements for this RFP without allowances or any kind of paper agreements. So, our commonality. Both the City Council and Cortez Flying Service share a common goal of generating commerce while protecting and servicing or serving the citizens of this community. We trust your commitment to make the right decision for the long term greater good of Cortez, Montezuma County, and the region. And we really do appreciate your time. Great. Uh, we would like to hear from the White Rudder Aviation Group now, please. Could you identify yourself? Hello, my name is Andrew Chan with White Rudder Aviation. Okay. I believe in the previous FB is still sharing the screen and it will not allow me to share the screen until he ceases.
Ladies and gentlemen of the council, esteemed citizens of Cortez, my name is Andy Chan and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Wright River Aviation. And today we're very pleased to be in front of you to present our Cortez Airport Investment and Growth Plan. So first off, why are we here? Uh, we all know that government plays an important role in the community. And one of the things that government does is provide infrastructure. The Cortez Airport is a valuable piece of infrastructure that has been neglected for years and is an underutilized asset. Even that being the case, you can see that the Colorado Aviation System did an economic impact study on the airport of Cortez and determined that over $14 million of business revenue generated by the, city, by the uh, Cortez Airport. So the, the airport is an incredibly valuable asset to the community. Again, that is underutilized and undervalued. And really there's an opportunity here for the city of Cortez to be elevated together with the airport environment. So uh, again, why are we here? There was a request for proposal as we talked about with the fixed base operator. The review committee did review the proposal. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the last person who just spoke said we did not meet the requirements. That is un an untruth as was determined by the uh, committee. And the committee did vote in favor of right road aviation in 3-0. We certainly appreciate that recommendation. And the reason they selected that was that they selected a proposal that most closely satisfies the needs of the city of Cortez and Montezuma County and is deemed to be the most advantageous to the local citizenry and aviation community. So we appreciate that recommendation. And that's based on a number of things uh, that we put in the proposal. So a little bit about Wright Runner Aviation. Wright Runner Aviation is a full service aerospace firm. Uh, all of us who are in the, in the Wright Runner Aviation and the principals and our, uh, our staff members have been in aviation our entire professional careers. And we have a very important mission that we believe in spreading throughout the world. And that mission is to make the dream of flight accessible to all. And we'll get into that a little bit more as to what that means, but we don't believe that aviation just should just be reserved for the rich and the wealthy, but should also be made available to the general community. And we truly believe that and have implemented uh, record-breaking programs to enable that to occur. We have a big, very audacious goal, and that is to make the Cortez Airport a keystone of the community. Essentially, again, because it has been neglected over years and years and years of mismanagement, we would like to elevate that and make, make uh, great use of that resource that, uh, that is out there. So who is Red Runner Aviation? Here's a picture of our team that was taken about a year ago. We have since about doubled in size for about 15 members. Uh, as you can see, everyone here is exceptionally passionate about aviation. Again, we've all been in aviation or professional uh, entire professional careers, and uh, we have a unique and varied backgrounds from uh, flight instructors to a &E mechanics, FAA certified mechanics, to uh, aircraft sales executives, and a number of different people on the team, and we continue to expand that. And so uh, these are just a, a few pictures of uh, our picture of the team, and again, we will be expanding that team significantly uh, upon the selection that you make here today. So what does Wright Rider Aviation do? We have uh, extensive experience as a fixed space operator. We do manage the Inverness Airport, so that is a different. I'm actually the airport manager uh, on record on behalf of Citrus County uh, at the Inverness Airport. So our duties at the Inverness Airport go above and beyond just the fixed space operator to working with the Federal Aviation Administration, Florida Department of Transportation, uh, working to, to get grants money for the community there and the airport there. Uh, and we have a lot of expansion programs with respect to that. And then um, also economic development of the airport. So we have a very important role at the Inverness Airport. And part of that includes fuel sales. We sell both under low and Jet A. We provide full service aircraft maintenance and aircraft. Just a little bit, I'm sorry, Hannah, I'm just watching you. So if you could speak just a little more slowly, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. We provide a full aircraft rental. We have, this is just a picture of some of the airplanes that are. We have approximately 15 airplanes in the fleet, and we are constantly growing that business. Uh, in fact, we add about two to three airplanes per year to our rental and instruction fleet. Uh, we also provide hangar, rent, hangar rental and tie down space, and new hangar builds. So we are very active in working with uh, the over there, the Citrus County, uh, Citrus County, and developers to build uh, actually an airport business park over there and attract new business. Uh, we have always been a Hertz car rental location, so people can come on in. We typically have approximately three to four Hertz rental cars on site, and we intend to bring that over here. 
We have a full uh, full service pilot shop, including headsets, uh, various parts that people need for aircraft, gloves, things of that nature. And then we're also very heavy into flight training. Uh, flight training is super important in the industry as that's how new blood gets into aviation and people get excited about aviation. And we're happy when that happens because aviation is a very uh, good, good career for young people to get into. So we provide primary advanced glider, tailwheel, aromatic, pre-agricultural aviation training. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail later. And then also very important to our company, we are a craft sales uh, executive. So we do represent the commercial Panthera, as was pointed out. And we do sell and broker uh, approximately four to five pre-owned aircraft uh, per month uh, as well. So we, we are very active on the pre-owned side as well. And then uh, one thing we do in addition to that is aircraft management. So we help people uh, identify an aircraft that would suit their business needs, maintain that aircraft for them, provide them with a pilot, that sort of thing. And uh, that's how our aircraft will be managed on behalf of clients. So as you can see, we're a very well-rounded and diversified firm. Now, when, when you select right runner aviation as your FBO, you're not just getting our team, but we, we place a lot of value on strategic partnerships because one company can't do it all. So we work very closely with a lot of our strategic partners, Pipersville, of course, manufacturers of Panthera. Uh, as we discussed, we operate the Inverness Airport and with uh, Citrus County. Uh, we're very heavily aligned with marketing efforts with Michelin. Uh, the Society of Aviation Flight Educators is a is the National Association for Flight Instructors. And uh, I actually sit on the board of directors for that. And we provide a number of resources to SAFE members and vice versa coming back to the community as well. Uh, we work very closely with AOPA, the Airplane Owners and Pilots Association. Uh, they do a number of things and actually we're in the December uh, cover of that AOPA magazine. Uh, we work very closely with the Experimental Aircraft Association and uh, with their publications and their safety teams as well. <coughs> Uh, we work with Garmin, of course, on the avionics side to get top of the line avionics installed in aircraft, like homing aircraft engines, uh, light speed. We're, uh, of course, number one thing, well, no, no, not number one, but we're, we're also a shell aviation fuel uh, supplier, and shell definitely is the top tier in, in fuel. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, bearing to wheels and brakes, and as we discussed, hurts. Uh, there's a number of other uh, partnerships that we work very closely with because we believe in sharing our love of aviation with the community in a big way. So we're very heavily involved in nonprofits such as uh, the Society of Aviation Flight Educators, the 99's uh, Society of Women Pilots, Women in Aviation, the National Business Aviation Association. Um, since we do are involved in airport management, we are a member of the Florida Airport Council, uh, which is, uh, helps all the airports in the local area. Uh, and then of course, a number of other corporate uh, partnerships as well. So all of these partnerships help us on a technical side, help us from a marketing side. And again, when you select Red Rider Aviation today as your FBO of choice, you're not only getting the weight of Red Rider Aviation behind you, but many of our strategic partners as well. Now we're here today to talk about the airport revitalization plan. So we have a, a multifaceted approach. Essentially, we need to modernize and improve FBO services. We need to establish Cortez as a flight destination rather than as a flight desert. We need to bring flight training to Cortez and establish Cortez as a purposeful hub. We also will attract additional aviation businesses, improve airport economic contribution, and give back to the community. So first off, let's talk about modernizing and improving FBO services. First thing we're going to do is invest heavily in an FBO remodel. Uh, the lease is very clear that the premises are to be delivered on an as-is condition, and we're, we're accepting of that, and we intend to invest heavily to bring the structures into the modern era. Because an FBO, a fixed space operator in an airport, essentially you get a lot of wealthy individuals that fly in on a jet or an aircraft, and they expect luxury, they demand top tier services. Uh, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, next, it's very important, is we're going to invest in modern compliant equipment to enhance safety. Uh, that starts with modern compliant fuel trucks rather than outdated fuel trucks, and also compliant DIC equipment. One of the biggest things we're going to do is bring competitive fuel prices to the area. Uh, unlike the price gouging and practices of the current FBO, uh, we will reduce fuel prices by $1 a gallon uh, on Jet A and 100 Bullet. And we did bring with us today a uh, representative of Titan Fuels, who's a Shell representative. Uh, we have already uh, conducted those pricing studies of what fuel is or what the cost of delivering fuel to the Cortez Airport. 
and that is well within uh, healthy margins for profitable business. We're going to enhance maintenance services to include airframe, engine, and avionics. We do have an avionics specialty, especially with the department. Uh, and on the engine side, we are uniquely qualified to work on electric aircraft. Electric aircraft are the future of aviation, uh, and they uh, electric aircraft are going to be heavily uh, coming out in the next 10 to 20 years. So that, that is very, very important right now. Our technicians are some of the future country certified to work on electric aircraft. One uh, another and very important thing, as we've already done in Inverness, is to build additional hangars. Essentially, um, when people look at moving to a community, a lot of people who look at moving to a community may be pilots and want to base aircraft at an airport, but lack of hangar space may deter that individual Go somewhere else. So it's very important that there's tons of hangar space available, and our intent is to invest and in privately fund uh, those those hangars. We're going to establish Cortez as a flight destination. So uh, that's very important because we really believe in the economic development of the airport. So we're going to provide a targeted marketing campaign to compete regionally, designed to draw traffic from other regional destinations such as Telluride, Durango, and Farmington. Um, one of the reasons people haven't been coming here is because there's been a lack of rental cars, for example. So if I fly to Cortez, can I get a rental car to go check out uh, St. Mesa and uh, in the past it hasn't been possible. So that's a key importance, and it's also very important to have uh, luxury rental cars, uh, not just, say, a compact sedan, because again, those jet clients that are coming out want that luxury view. So we're going to showcase local assets and tourism, and, and by this we mean we're going to actively market the area within the aviation community. And so we've done that with Inverness, and Inverness was kind of a desert look before we arrived. And we're really made to put Inverness on the map with respect to pilots, so people actually fly there. And we're going to do the same thing with Cortez. We already talked about the first ones on the site. Bringing flight training to Cortez, this is something we're super excited about. As I discussed before, we are a full service flight school. We offer all the certificates and ratings such as sport pilot, school pilot, private pilot. We also offer advanced such as intermediate commercial flight instructor. And we also are a glider school, and we are the largest terrible school in the world. So terrible is a type of aircraft uh, that is a specialty kind of niche program. We are the largest terrible school in the world. We're very proud of that. We provide uh, a number of pilots to terrible transitions. We're also uh, a leading provider of aerobatic training. Uh, that's actually a picture of me in the upside down airplane there. It's called this. And we also are uniquely qualified to provide pre agricultural aviation training. So the individuals who go on to become crop dusters or fire bombers, they need to go to a school like us prior to doing that in order to become qualified. Now, it may rise and say, okay, well, there isn't that much of a demand for flight training in Cortez. Well, we actually believe that to be a fallacy. So case in point one, forecasts an unprecedented demand for new pilots, of more than 800,000 needed over the next 20 years. And every single flight training school in the industry is booming, even with COVID, there's not enough flight schools in the country to satisfy the demand. So it's a missed opportunity here big time in Cortez uh, that, uh, that there hasn't been a flight school here. Now, to, the, to that point, um, Inverness is kind of similar to uh, Cortez in that at our facility in Inverness, 85% of our clients come from out of the area, and we suspect the same thing will happen as well. And people come to us because we are uniquely qualified as a flight training facility. And so what that means is we, we typically have between four to ten full-time students out of our facilities, and we can really do the same thing over here. First off, that means we're not dependent on the local economy. Second off, that means we're bringing students and, and, and uh, clients in and <coughs> eat and spend in the local area, and that greatly contributes to the local economy and economic development. We're going to establish Cortez as a purposeful hub. Right Rudder Aviation is the exclusive Pepperstall Panther, Panther dealer in the Western Hemisphere. Pepperstall is a leading manufacturer of light aircraft. They've been in business since 1989. They are based in Sylvania, but actually they export most of their aircraft from Italy. And um, actually, uh, to uh, counter uh, previous FDO's points, we have sold more than 50 units of the Pepperstall Panther so far. And the Panther has been flying since 2012, so it is not still in development. It is a mature product and we are bringing it to market here in the United States. Now, the significance of this is that we will make Cortez uh, the U.S. Uh, Western Panther headquarters. That means uh, customers. Now, one thing you did get right is the cost of a Panther is approximately $650,000, that was accurate. 
Um, those are high-end clientele who are purchasing these aircraft. These people, we will be bringing to Cortex to provide demonstration flights, the whole sales process, a two-week, 25-hour training course, which we will stay in local hotels, eat in a local area. And then, of course, once they take delivery of the aircraft, they will come back for service because we're uh, the service center for the aircraft. Now, we don't just sell the four-seat Panthera, which is the ultimate luxury personal aircraft. We also sell uh, two-seat aircraft, like you see in the picture there, which are used for training, and we actually use those in our flight school as well. Um, so this alone will bring a, a, a lot of economic development to the Cortez area. Now, one of the things we did at Inverness and we're going to continue to do here in Cortez is to attract other aviation businesses. An airport needs to be a community of aviation businesses, not just one business here and one business there. So uh, one of the top ones to recruit is an air medical ambulance service. Uh, we were actually able to recruit one at Inverness called Air Methods, so they provide helicopter air ambulance services, and we have a good relationship with them. We're going to invite them to come on over. Of course, another popular one is fire control, survey aircraft, and an additional Part 121 and 135 operators. Uh, speaking of the 135 operation, that's called an air taxi service, and uh, we actually have an FAA application in for the 135, which is forthcoming. It would have been here except for COVID already. Um, but what you find with an air taxi service, actually, that's really interesting is you can't have just one type of aircraft. So essentially, there's if you think of a range of aircraft, there's very small aircraft, a two-seat aircraft, and there's very big airplanes like a 747. And each client who needs to get from point A to point B needs a different type of aircraft. So it's actually much better to be flexible and utilize brokers so that you can provide exactly the correct type of aircraft that that person needs. Um, so some of them need a four-seat airplane, some of them need a ten-seat airplane, and it really depends. And the cost of that greatly varies depending on what your needs are. Um, we also would like to attract specialty maintenance providers such as maintenance, um, sorry, Magneto Overhaul and the Propeller Shop, and then specialty aircraft dealers such as glider dealers, wing shifter, helicopter. Basically, the Cortez Airport has the ability to be an aviation city, and that means that aviation businesses are welcome, economic development is welcome. And once you get that ball rolling, which we have experience with at the Inverness Airport, it really uh, snowballs essentially. So establishing Cortez as a general aviation hub will attract other businesses and further expand business development goals. Uh, it's very important to improve airport economic uh, contribution. And one of the ways we did that is our proposal. We uh, elected to double the amount of rent paid to the city directly by the buyer of our aviation <laughs> and increase fuel flow fee paid to the city. Now, in addition to increasing the fuel flow fee from as it stands, we project a 10% growth in increased fuel sales via our pricing strategy of reducing all fuel costs by one dollar per gallon. Uh, right Rider Aviation will move uh, principals management on site and become members of, this, the, of the Cortez community. We're very much looking forward to that. But we will also need to hire and expand. We will do so locally and provide training uh, for land service technicians. MPIAs, flight instructors, and aircraft sales executives. So there will be a number of career opportunities for people interested in joining aviation as a career. Uh, and of course, we will uh, build additional hangars and establish Cortez as an aviation city. And as you can see, once you do any, all of these, it starts to stack up uh, significantly. At Bright River Aviation, we are blessed to be in aviation. We love what we do. And we very much believe in giving back to the community. And this is something you can check with our community back in Inverness. But we do a number of things. One thing we do is host AOPA Rusty Pilot Seminars. You can see a picture of us here where we are giving back to the local community and hosting free ground training sessions uh, for local pilots. Uh, we also conduct comprehensive flight reviews for local pilots. And we go above and beyond what is required to bring that safety to the next level. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, I am on the SAFE uh, Board of Directors of Society of Aviation Flight Educators, and that uh, membership has a mentorship program that we're very heavily involved in and bring that to not only the airport we're in, but actually all the surrounding airports to enhance safety and get low time CFIs or new flight instructors to partner with uh, experienced flight instructors, again, to enhance safety. Um, one of the greatest things that we do is we develop innovative flight training programs to make aviation more affordable and accessible to expiring pilots. So we actually have the world's only $3,000 program to become a pilot. 
and we're going to bring that program here. Uh, no one else can touch that program at the moment, and so we're very excited and we've had an excellent response. Uh, so far, we've had, uh, we just launched this program in March, but we've had, I believe, more than 100 people go through that program already to become pilots who were not otherwise able to afford uh, becoming a pilot. Again, giving back to the community, we host uh, annual open hangar events and flying events um, where we welcome the, the non aviation community to come out and check out how aviation gives back to the community. Uh, we host monthly what we call Flying Fridays, which are discounted discovery flights to get the local population in the air so they can experience general aviation see what it's like. Now, this is a big one, this next slide item. We are currently partnered with AOPA to implement a four year aviation STEM curriculum into the Citrus County High School. And we're very proud about that because that allows us, again, to get young people involved in aviation. We don't charge anything for the program. In fact, we actually don't need significantly. And we intend to bring that same curriculum here to the schools in Cortez. It's, it's, it's great because it gets the kids excited. Uh, it gets them a, a potential career path. And it's a very good career path to get into. Uh, Red Runner Aviation also, as a company, uh, provides scholarships for students uh, based on both merit and need. Uh, a number of different programs based around that. And so uh, oftentimes we do donate complete flight training packages to students so they pay zero out of pocket to become a pilot. Uh, another thing we do is apprenticeship programs. We're very big on this. So we have uh, apprentice mechanics come in, uh, study with us for three years and, and actually turn wrenches and work on aircraft and line service. And at the end of that, they're able to earn their FAA airframe and power line certificate and then go out in the workforce and get good jobs. Uh, we also uh, work with local community colleges to establish aviation programs. This is something that takes a little bit more time and in depth to get started. Uh, but we're, we're very much looking forward to doing that here in Cortez. And finally, we're very heavily involved with Boy Scouts of America. So we'd like to uh, launch an aviation explorers post uh, here at Cortez as well. So these are just some of the ways we can back to the community. We're very big into community service and helping young people, especially. So in closing, uh, everyone on the Red Rider Aviation teams, we love what we do. Um, through our love for aviation, we continue to build a legacy of service and match to the industry. In our opinion, aviation is the most exciting thing in the world, and we feel incredibly, incredibly blessed to share a passion uh, about above aviation through others through our services. We understand the city of Cortez has an obligation to choose the best firm to provide them FBO services and have a unique opportunity today to ensure that the Cortez Municipal Airport is held to a much higher standard and allow me to reach its full potential. Again, we would like to thank the committee for your recommendation. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, we'd like to hear some comments from the uh, committee, the city committee. Uh, John, Rich, or John, Amy, and uh, David. What are some comments you'd like to make on these two presentations or your recommendations? I'll go ahead and start if um, the two council members don't mind. Okay. Um, again, Wright Runner knocked it out of the park. Um, they gave the same presentation essentially in here that they did to the committee. Um, when we asked Wright Runner or um, Cortez Flying Service what they would change at the airport, the answer was status quo, um, which I was not looking for status quo. They have been there. 70 years or more, um, up until a very short time ago, there was no website. There was no um, trying to get other aviation in here. The Hertz left and we've been without a rental car service for quite some time. Um, the fuel incentive yeah, program. No, no talking, please. Hold on, just let him do his presentation, please. The fuel incentive program must have just started because the whole complaint started with one of the pilots out there saying that he was paying more for fuel here than elsewhere, so he'd just take his plane elsewhere to fill it up. Um, 
And then the increased networking with local businesses, that is something that came out of the interview process. Um, and I got a hold of Kelly Kirkpatrick after this and said, you know, would you work with either one of these organizations to do a better job of promoting King or promoting Cortez to the wide area? Um, as one of the commissioners said, um, we got a jewel sitting out there and we haven't done anything with it in the last hundred years. Um, and frankly, I have to agree with him. When you get off an airplane in Cortez, it does not say beautiful welcome to Cortez. Um, if they're going to be selling airplanes out of Cortez, I can't see them doing it out of the um, hangars that we have out there. I definitely would see them uh, beautifying the whole area. And to me, um, this county is in desperate need of economic development and they put it in their presentation that that was where their focus was also and that's what sold me on them. Okay, could, I, uh, could I jump in here now? Um, first of all, uh, Cortez Flying Service, uh, your performance record is not in question. It's very impressive. Congratulations. Um, what we were and are looking for is the future of the airport. And from the initial presentation, we kind of were of the impression that uh, Cortez Flying Service was more or less kicking the can down the road. Uh, and what we were looking for and what we believe we found was an organization that was proactive and innovative and had a plan for the future. That's where we need to go. They have a growth plan, they're forward thinking, um, and that's where we need to look from where we are now. So our thinking has leaned to uh, right rudder for this particular reason. It's nothing, it's not personal. I know none of the uh, people involved, but uh, I do believe that we were very fair in our uh, decision-making and uh, what we were looking for. That's basically what I have to offer. Well, uh, you all sat through the last two um, uh, moments with these last two companies, just like I did. So I'll just speak towards the experience that I had being on the airport committee. Um, coming into being on this committee, I kind of fell into this just because no other hands on the council were raised. And doing my diligent um, efforts, I have put many, many hours into researching everything having to do with airports. Um, so I don't have any, you know, bias as far as if it's Wright Rudder or if it's Cortez Flying Service. Um, I was just presented information and I made it made an, an informed decision for the recommendation of Wright Rudder uh, based on the proposal that we had in hand and paper and from the interview process. Uh, with that being said, uh, I really am very excited about the opportunity for community involvement that Wright Rudder has proposed. I think getting our youth involved at the high school age is really exciting. Thinking about some sort of opportunity for Montezuma County youth to, you know, have them in an upward mobility uh, job placement just it sounds incredible to me. That three thousand dollar program to get pilots that have always had that dream in the back of their mind of of, of flying um, that's accessible. Um, so those are just a couple of the the qualifiers that led to the decision. Um, Having uh, 
just heard this last presentation uh, from Cortez Flying Service. I am totally floored. I really wish that this would have, you know, been presented earlier. Um, you know, the information that came out, it looks like, you know, you've had a little bit of a, a jump start, like a little bit of awakening of like, okay, like what do we need to do? We rolled out a website. I just now, while you're speaking, got on that website. It is beautiful. You spent some time in the very recent uh, days getting that going. That's awesome. You have intentions for, you know, getting in touch with the community. Um, so I really give you kudos on that. Uh, that's pretty much in summation. I'll pass it off to the rest of the council. And thank you both, uh, both of your groups for showing up and giving great presentations tonight. Thank you, Amy. Uh, before we make a vote or anything, uh, I'd like to uh, have the council uh, make a motion on this item, then, then we can discuss it. And can we ask questions af after the motion then? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Rachel. <laughs> Make a motion. Okay. As has been pointed out, you need to make a motion to do something in order to have a discussion topic. So if you felt ready to move forward, you would somebody would make a motion to approve one of the proposals over the other, and then you would discuss it amongst yourselves. You could ask the questions, and then that motion would either succeed or fail. And we making a motion doesn't mean we're voting yes. We have to make a motion to discuss it. I want to preface that. So I would like to make a motion to award the fixed base operator um, contract for the Cortez Municipal Airport to Wright Rudder Aviation for a hybrid minimum five-year and potential 25-year contract as recommended by the Airport Selection Committee. And second. All right, I'll second so we can have the discussion. Okay, we're going to open this up for city council discussion now. Uh, I wasn't present for the initial presentation between the two companies. Uh, frankly, I was, I was impressed by CMS and their presentation. I understand it was been upgraded from the initial presentation. Uh, personally, I, I'd like to keep the for our people. But saying that, I can see how there's a lot of room for growth in this airport. I, I like the forward thinking right letter. Uh, and uh, I would like CFS to take note of the programs that Wright Rudder is offering in their energy and their forward looking uh, in terms of uh, upgrading our airport. Uh, it's, uh, there's room for improvement. You know, we've had uh, uh, Cortez Flying Service there for many years and they're doing a great job, good mechanics, good flyers, uh, well established in the community. Uh, they've done a great job for 70 some years, uh, but we need to think about the future also. Uh, we, we want Cortez to grow, we want Cortez to thrive and prosper, and uh, we just want the airport to be part of that process. Uh, these are just my, my thoughts about this. Uh, I think both 
FBOs are good companies. Uh, I, I like keeping it local. I, I know many of these people here that are interested and read the letters. Uh, people are very happy with what we have here, but we need to think about the future too. So uh, any other council members would like to jump in here? I, I mostly have a question for the city manager and uh, Mike Green. Um, so, are the five year bids best practices? Like, after the five year contract up, is it, is that, is it best practices for there to be a bid put out? Or, or, like, so should every five years there be bids put out for an FBO? When we spoke with everybody, when I looked at some other FBO contracts from around the country, they appear to be for longer periods of time because of financing. In other words, if you're going to build a new airplane hangar, the bank isn't going to be able to get it paid back in five years. Okay, um, And they're lending the money to that person who built it. Okay, It's not necessarily what's going to happen here, but in order to borrow money, your collateral is your lease, it's your income stream. And so what I did was when I designed the lease, I said, okay, 25 years, that's what everybody seems to want, but the city can't, be, can't afford to be hooked into something that isn't working for 25 years that they may need to get out of. Um, it's easier for everybody to sit down on a, at a five-year review with a renewal if there's problems, they can be worked through. If everything's going well and there are no issues, this contract has an automatic renewal unless it's brought up at five years. So it's a five-year plan. Let's see what's going on. Um, there's some other terms and conditions have to be negotiated out with the successful contractor. Um, but that was my thinking. Um, it allows them to get some longevity. It allows us to make sure things are working and we can move forward. I saw no requirement anywhere that we have to have it every five years is the down and dirty answer, but I might as well explain why I did what I did. Okay. The only thing I would add is the former city I was in, we had an airport and they required a 50 year lease. And when it got done in the 25, they wanted it re up again. Just as Mike said, capital improvements are expensive and they can't get loans without that longer term contract. But it's also dangerous because that's how you get complacent. You know, oh, these guys are down here and, you know, they're good. You know, things are going well. We're getting a check every month. Life is good. But if you have some of these other goals in mind, um, just saying, well, we can terminate this anytime we want with 90 days notice doesn't really need it done. But I think a five year, hey, we got to look at this, is a good plan. So, can I ask questions to the, to the bidders? Sure. Okay. Uh, so, I have a question for Wright Rudder. Um, so, if we were to select you guys, are you going to be moving people here for to create that business and for the jobs, or are you going to hire people locally? What does that look like over 25 and 25 years? Excellent question. Um, the answer is both. We will be moving a number of our principal uh, people to Cortez. Of course, that expertise is needed. We will also hire and expand locally significantly. So um, over at our other facility, we have 15 people there right now, and we foresee the need for at least an additional 15 because that facility is still growing here. So while we may move, say, two people here, we definitely need to hire an additional, say, 13 local. And we, uh, like we discussed in our programs, we, we very much uh, hire for attitude and train for skill. So we teach people from the beginning how to be a flight instructor, how to do airport management, how to build hammers. Uh, they learn the whole package. Uh, because there's so many careers in aviation, everyone thinks it's just pilots, but there's pilots, flight attendants, dispatchers, maintenance technicians, so many different career paths. And as an FBO and airport management, we do all of them. So uh, 
we will hire a local and train local as well. Um, and then with like some of the programs and um, ideas you guys had, our population and in the surrounding area is very slim compared to say Florida. So if you don't have enough interest in, in some of these programs from the, the region, what, what would that affect? Well, that's an excellent question. I think because our approach is multifaceted, so we not only are working with Girl Scouts of America on aviation, uh, we're also working with 99s and working with aviation. So um, because aviation career is both exciting and it pays fairly well, uh, the response that we typically get with you with you is once they realize that it's an accessible program, that they're very passionate about it, and they're very happy to be involved with the program. So uh, we don't foresee that happening. If we if, if it did happen for some reason, uh, of course we would need to satisfy the needs of the airport professional. So of course we could look outside to say even you know Durango is not that part of our program. But again, we don't see that that becoming an issue because all of the programs that we put together for youth for mentorship programs, for uh, programs to get your, your um, maintenance certificates. Those are all programs that people are excited about because if you don't go to a place like us and you want to become a, an FAA mechanic, you're going to spend $120,000. Or if you want to become a professional pilot, you're going to spend almost $200,000. So we have unique programs that get people there with very little out of pocket cost and sometimes none. That's a lot of time to do sponsors. Thank you. Um, and then I have one, one question for um, Cortez Flying Service. Did, was there anything in your proposal about trying to get rental cars here? Um, and what what is your idea for that? Greg, go up to the podium. Yeah. Go up to the podium, Greg. Because I, I think, it, yeah, we, people need cars to explore our area. Um, and if they haven't already driven here, you know, I'd like to see a car rental company be revived down there. Okay, I understood your question, right? I'm wondering if we are engaged in the rental car company to get the service to for this. Mm -hmm. Yes, we already have. We have enterprise rental car going back to the airport. That's phase one, and that's with reservations. Phase two, which is currently in place, is that we will have walk-up service just to be kind of there and piece of that's that's getting worked up right now. So yes, we do. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, I have a question as long as you're up there. Uh, the the terminal is pretty old, and uh, I don't. Is it ADA uh, compliant now? I'm going to defer. Bobby, can you answer that question? I think you have said here. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, are, are you speaking of the, the general aviation building or are you speaking of the uh, airline terminal? The general aviation building and, and the terminal. Okay, the, the two different entities. Uh, the terminal building the airline uses is mostly ADA compliant as of the rules that were in place when they did the new model. Current FBO is deemed uh, un, how should I say this, unable to meet requirements without knocking the building down and starting over. Okay. okay. Um, Craig, do, do you have plans for upgrading the facilities? Uh, this contract is renewed. Uh, I still defer to him too. Principles. David? Well, it's not. It's not you, 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 have to, you have to go to the mic. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> it's not really affordable to knock that building down and build a whole new facility. What do you? What do you I have no idea what it would cost, but um, what, it, what would it cost? A couple of million dollars. Okay. Probably something like that. 
So we don't have time. What are you going to hear from the people? Yes. Uh, I, I have hey, when are you going to hear that to the people? Very important. Two quick items. We've, we've gotten um, numerous letters, phone calls, conversations. I just learned this information today. It is absolutely pertinent to your to your. Um, you're not paying attention to them. You're not listening to the letters or the emails or the people. You're, you're talking to a, a, a little flight training program okay. flying single engine flight school. And you're damaging Cortez Flight Service in the amount of about $700,000. Sir. Um, we haven't made a decision yet. So we, have, we haven't We're decided. Just I'm just I'm going to have to have to to Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. This is right. Could you sit down, please? Yes. Um, what this is is a bid process. This is a process where they, it's like buying a car for the city police department. It's like paving the street. It's like building a building. Council listed the information they've been given under some controls, which is called a request for proposal. This is not what would be a public meeting where everybody stands up and says, this is what I think you should do, or this is what I think the evidence is. This is not a public participation decision by council. Council needs to look at the information they've been provided by the two applicants, excuse me, they need to look at the recommendation of the committee and make a decision. Um, this is a pretty limited, um, what do you want to call it, vision scope here. Um, and that's why there's no public comment. You could have used more input from the people that use this facility. And you have not had them. Yes, we've got numerous letters, sir, but you have not had this discussion. This is great. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. One of the things I said in the presentation is that we pulled our clients, we went across everywhere we could and talked to people, said, okay, what, what do you desire in an MBO? The actual people that are using the airport, the actual people that our clients have been for years here at this airport. We got that feedback, but we do know that none of them got a call from the committee, none of them got a call from the city council member, and none of them got a call from my brother. How many pilots are in here? So how do they know what our, yeah. yeah. How do they know yeah. what these people mean? Um, Cortez flight this is so This is so out of order. This is not what this process is about. And I think we need to get back to the council was asking questions. They know what they want to do. This is their meeting, excuse me. Um, and so I think um, you folks, if you've answered the questions to the satisfaction of council can sit back down and then council can move on to the next question by another council member or whatever. Um, but this is council's decision, council needs to follow procedure as to how they award bids and be consistent. And these are not public speaking events. If council wants to turn it into one, they can, but they do so knowing what that can achieve. So I, I, it's time I think to move on to the next question or the next person or whatever. You guys have done your research. I would like to hear from our council members online any discussion or any questions. David or Amy or Orly. Yeah, I got a couple of questions. Uh, I was going to say, after all these years that I've been in, involved in all this stuff, I have never heard a complaint or anything from the, you know, the Cortez Flying Service or all this year that I have. But the, also, I don't know who's going to answer this question. I don't know if it's Russ or John, uh, John's or, or Mike. Mike's been around quite a while, uh, Green. But the, all of a sudden, this came up. But I guess I never heard any complaints from any budgets or anything that the airport was doing bad. And I thought it was always doing okay in my book. 
what I understood from everybody talking. Um, Orly, I don't know that this was complaint driven. The renewal was coming up. Russ is getting ready to retire, so we wanted to use his expertise while he was still there. Yeah, I'm not putting you. I'm not putting you in a spot, Russ. I was just asking because all these years, I haven't heard any complaints that that's it's going downhill or uphill or anything. And we figured it's as far as my book was, it's uh, it was running okay. The only complaint that we received was uh, local pilot wanted lower fuel prices, and he made a move to uh, acquire Cortez Flying Service, which was unsuccessful. So he made it known he was going to challenge them when their contract was up and uh, forcing us to go to the request for proposal. So that's what gener generated all of this. That's the genesis. And subsequently, that particular individual did not submit a proposal. So really, we are in this proposal process, and various things have been identified by the committee that they wanted to see you know, answered in their questions and proposal, which was more than just um, there's been no complaints for the past few years, or these people have been here and, and moved on. There was some growth and some other things that were put in that people wanted to see. So that's how we got here tonight with two people um, or two proposals to pick and choose from which ones you guys want to do. But he's going to go belly up in two years Let's see if you're being interviewed. Uh, David or Amy, do you have any comments? David? Go no, ahead. I've uh, pretty much stated my case, I believe. Um, and again, we, we approached this initially with no agenda other than to think of the future of the airport and the best solutions to getting there. And this, uh, I'm not sure if we're open to all this public comment without um, some uh, decision making or some movement, but um, no, I've, I've nothing more to add than what I've already said. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to circle back on the fact that I think Cortez Flying Service showed up tonight in a way that the airport committee didn't experience. Um, and that's really exciting. So if, you know, the, the council's on board with the, the steps that they're making and, and, and feel, you know, like that it's been a little bit of a revitalization process, of like, oh, hey, like, let's take a look at what's going on at the at the airport. Then I think some something proactive proactive has happened, and that's really exciting to get like a little bit more pride in the job that you're doing. Um, I, you know, like, I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, that they showed up. Um, I think that I've already said what I need to say about uh, Wright Rudder. I'll pass it back to the panel and the chambers. Hey, Jeremy. Um, I, I'm impressed with Cortez Flying Service. They're uh, wanting to change. Uh, they've uh, upgraded their presentation. I think they've seen the light. Uh, I think they want to do a better job. Uh, I kind of tend to favor Cortez Flying Service personally. Uh, But I, I think Cortez Flying Service needs to wake up. I, I think they, there's a lot of room for improvement. And uh, I'm thinking if we award a contract, maybe for five years, that we want to see something change. We want to see some growth. We want to see some forward motion in the airport. In the, Connection with the community. Uh, we realize that you know, 
know, this, this uh, uh, FBO employs many local people and uh, we're very, I'm very concerned, you know, about the people in this area and their employment and their livelihood. And I'd like to further that, keep, keep these people, you know, having a living standard. Uh, Greg, did you have something? Yes, you can see. This is this is where this stuff starts to go south. No, okay. you, you, have, uh, you have um, closed the speaking and got a motion on the floor. Um, you started. Um, Who's in charge here? I'm just giving legal advice. If, if we just if people just keep coming up and speaking and speaking, when are you going to call the vote? You need to make a decision. If this motion fails, that's fine. We make another motion. The only, the, the only uh, people I'm going to have speak are the principals. Okay. Uh, right? Or the uh, representative from uh, Right Runner. Greg, as a representative for CFS. Okay, so here's, here's what we would like to do. We would like for you to put conditions on our protest flying service to have us prove out. We've, we've, we've rallied, we brought in the resources, we're geared up. If you compare our website to their website, not so many. We're already moving ahead, we're already doing this stuff. We're not promising it for two weeks after the beginning of the year, we're already doing it. Please give us time to finish doing what we're putting in play. Let us prove ourselves. Let us do what we are resourced to do at this point. But put conditions on it, we accept them. Give us, a, give us conditions. Give us a time frame, we will be it. But please let us have a chance at it. You're working with this, you know, decades old company, has all the foundation. Now let us prove ourselves in the next round. That's all we ask. Uh, Mike, you can, are there any conditions we can put on this contract? Um, that was partially. Well, okay. this gentleman wants to speak to the other okay. principal. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. It's okay. They've had uh, over 50 years to improve the airports, and they've stayed stagnant. They have outdated fuel drugs that do not need to be down. Order. If you were to review the lease, you're going to have to say. Uh, the, the other gentleman today has said several non truths uh, today about our company. So have so, you. Hey, so have you. Sir, sir. One in this whole country. You said you sold 50 Hold it. There is one here. Hold it down, sir. Yes, sir. Let so him see. If he's willing to tell you non truths today, I think I'm just going to how they're probably going to improve if they haven't done so good. So we appreciate the, the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, Mayor, as a, as a compromise to public comment, what do you think of having the supporters of Cortez Flying Service in this room raising their hand and letting us count and make for the record how many people are here and support them? I, I couldn't understand. I'm sorry. Repeat your comment. Okay. Well, and I'm asking you, Mayor, if you want to do that process. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all those in the room in favor of renewing CFS, Cortez Flying Service contract. And hold your hand up so we can count, please. That's Thank not you. what she asked. She said how many people are no. no, are in support, are here in support of Cortez Flying Service. With all due respect to County Cole, I know we're not supposed to speak, but the thing that was said about 50 years of the opportunity. There has been changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, no, just hold your hands up. Just keep your hands up. Okay. 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 I think I count at least 36. Thank you. Man, we cannot hear you. So let's add the 36 hands of support to 
the number of letters of support that we have gotten for uh, Cortez Wine Service. Oh, okay. Um, just, uh, I think um, we couldn't take it back to parliamentary procedure because we're going all over the place here, and if we're going to make a decision or you're going to make a decision, excuse me, call for a vote. Um, this is just starting to go. Okay. Yeah. So then conditions will go. The okay. conditions would go with the new contract, and we would negotiate that out with the successful bidder. Okay, but that's the next motion. I'm assuming for an amendment to this motion. We don't have we don't have contract final yet. We would be bringing it back to you. Could you explain that? I have not sat down and negotiated a contract with either of the principals because I didn't know who, and I would have ended up negotiating two contracts. There's a few things being added to this one, no matter who gets it, like where you get sued, <laughs> some legalese things. But if you folks have um, standards, gauges, measurements, whatever the words are that you want in there, Russ has suggested some, there's some that are already in there, we would need to put those in um, so that whoever gets the contract has some guidance as to what they need to have to look like in five years. And then you could even go further than that. You could do several five-year plans, but um, at minimum, we would need some standards to judge at the end of five years. And at, at what point do we put these standards in mind? When, after you pick somebody and when we sit down and I negotiate with them and John negotiates them what the contract's gonna look like and then they say, okay, if council approves this, we'll sign it. And it to you and you say no we won't sign this but we will sign this it's just how it works but this would be at a later date we'll, we'll select one of the other fields i would like to have it for the first meeting in november so can we make a vote on the motion on the table you already have made a motion to award the um contract to red Rudder, so we need to take a vote on that motion and see what happens. Okay. Do we have a vote on this motion? Yasi? Nay. Hawkins? Aye. Lucero? Nay. Medina? Nay. Rainey? Aye. Uh, so now you'd have another motion to do something um, to award it to Cortez Flying Service, to table it, to do whatever you felt was appropriate at this point in time. Any council members down here want to make a motion? I'll make the motion again. Um, may I make a motion that we consider awarding the fixed base operator for the Cortez Municipal Airport to Cortez Flying Service for a hybrid minimum five year and potential 25 year contract as recommended. Yeah. Second. Second. Yes. Uh, wait. So, can we make a condition of like having uh, this FBO provide like a five year plan for growth or for diversification or some, something like that that we can hold them to at the end of five years to see if they've actually accomplished those goals? We're to have to, they've never presented a five year plan. The interviews and where we didn't get any of that information. So that's something they would have to develop and give to us so we can put it in the contract. Yeah, we'd like to see that. So that would be for the first meeting in November. I would like to see like car rentals uh, reestablished as part of the condition. 
Um, okay. The, the one thing about the car rentals, I mean, I, I, it's not really their choice. Um, we can say we encourage and we do some things, but I mean, that's one of the difficulties of some of these things. They have to have a car rental. Um, I don't know that they can pull that off. I don't know. To the extent there's different levels of car rentals, there's seven, two or three, there's seven, 20. I don't know what that's going to be. It has been very elusive at the airport to keep car rentals there. Um, and so, How many call the flying service? <laughs> and uh, we can negotiate it, but what I'm trying to do and say, folks, is not make it a break or failure on your part to lose the contract because you can't keep a rental car there because it's not your fault. If Enterprise doesn't like the way business is going down there, they'll yank that contract. So I really try not to tell you or these other folks that if you lose your rental car contract, that all of a sudden we're gonna terminate the contract. That's all I'm trying to say. So we've got, a, we can figure these things in. If you folks wanna give us some ideas of what you want in the contract, that would be good. We'll give you our ideas by November. I'm gonna need them. I'm <laughs> gonna need them in the next week or so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Where are we? I don't have any comments. Anybody for both? Miss Arrow. Morning. Yeah, I can hear you, but I was saying, uh, so we're voting. Voting for Cortez Flying Circus. I thought we already voted. Oh, aye. Medina? Aye. Rainey? Nay. Rosie? Aye. 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 The uh, next item, Mike, you want to do the next item? Do the sister. Which one? Are you going to present the next item on the sister? Yes. Okay, we just want to do the On the presentation, Mike's going to make the presentation. Oh, okay. Next item is a classic judicial item. Um, it's an approval of a medical retail marijuana license transfer of ownership. You want to give a few minutes for people to leave? You want to give a few minutes for people to leave? Give a few minutes for people to leave. Do not 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 somewhere between 500 and 750,000 population within 100 miles to deliver the type of students and flying schools. That's, that's one of the things. Okay, that's your Five minutes. Break. Okay. Yes. I 
I am not. I'm reading the names of who has watched the blood number. It's all by secret ballot. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. thank you. And if we need to take again, I will call you back. Okay? I'm not a, he's not able to send me these kind of emails and make it up. I'm gonna have to call Baby is I don't mind him texting me. Would you rather him do that? Yeah. I'm going to ask him if he can use text. Okay? Because I really don't see this. I don't know what we'll find out. Hey, Dorley, after the first one, if we have to go to Jimmy. Could I get Paul? Could you text me? All right, so if you're watching, if we could do a vote again, if you would text me. Okay, thank you. Yes, he can do that. So he's going to text me if, but he told me for his first, and I've already got Amy, and I'm waiting for David, but we're not there yet. Okay. 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 All right, buddy, the rest should be smooth sailing. Yeah. Hey, okay. you ready? Oh, Mike, he just left. Huh? Okay. You can, I can read it. You're comfortable. Okay. The regular meeting will recommence. Uh, the next item is a quasi judicial item. Uh, Mike Green. Okay. okay. I can present. I can okay. present. Uh, Linda will uh, present with a quasi-judicial item, transfer ownership of Doobie Sisters Retail Marijuana License. And I'll read the uh, statement. City Council, city council sits as a quasi-judicial body, and the City Council is restricted to make its findings and facts on evidence presented to them at the hearing. No member of the City Council should receive or solicit comments from any persons regarding matter pending before the city council prior to the formal hearing itself. If anyone has had any contact on this matter, please advise council and consider recusing themselves. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Green. Thank you, sir. Oops. Thank you, sir. This is the second part of a license application from, and I gotta make sure I get the right people here, Rooney Rules. You remember previously they came in and applied for a new license. It was a cultivation license. They had a piece of property with two buildings on it. One is the cultivation license, and this one would be changing the ownership of the retail marijuana store, the sales venue, from Southwest Sunshine LLC to Rini Rules LLC. Review rules would then own both licenses and there would not be two separate operations creating a distance issue. Um, we have done a complete background check. Um, there's a complete application that's been reviewed. Um, and this one is a little bit 
more slam dunk. Staff recommends approval of a transfer of ownership of the retail marijuana store to Rennie Rules LLC from Southwest Sunshine LLC. Okay. Uh, Mr. We open it up for the yeah, public. Yeah. We open this up for discussion, cool. public discussion. Any comments? Very none. Uh, There's none, so. Any, any, anyone up front? Up in Zoom? No comments? I don't have any. No, me neither. Yes, sir. Any um, close to public hearing, and then we'll just go on this order for a vote unless council has questions. Okay. Uh, can I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion uh, approving a change of ownership of a retail marijuana store license from Southwest Sunshine LLC to Renew Rules LLC, which is at CB Sisters, located at 695 North Broadway, Cortez. Second. Are there any other discussion items? Okay, can we have a vote? Rainey? Aye. Lucero? Aye. Medina? Aye. Huckins? Aye. Yazi? Aye. Lady? Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is a change 2020 budget for employee raise re implementation. Re -implementation, re -re -implementation. City Manager John Doherty. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this council probably doesn't remember because you weren't on here, I don't believe, but um, in late March, I presented the council that we didn't know how bad things were going to get with this COVID virus pandemic. And um, we brought to the council cuts of around $900,000 to the 2020 budget. Since that time, um, the last several months, we've been keeping a close eye on how the uh, the revenue is coming in, and I'm now very comfortable recommending to the council that you reinstitute the merit raises for employees beginning April 1st to make it retroactive for the employees' anniversary date. In addition, I will point out that the money is already, the merit raises are already in 2021 budget and 2022 that we've been talking about all along. So. This will not increase any deficits that we've been talking about. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Zoom. Zoom. I don't Zoom. have any, but uh, I like the idea. Okay. Yeah, I think it's great that we do enjoy your to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, do I can I have a motion on this item? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the finance director to put back into the budget the merit raises for employees that was suspended beginning April 1, 2020, and be made retroactive to the employee's anniversary date. Second. Hawkins? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Lucero? Aye. Gazi? Aye. Medina? Aye. Lady? Aye. Thank you. On behalf of this, the employees, I thank council. They were all very excited to hear that this was being presented to them. So thank you. On behalf of the employees. And thank you to the employees for all their hard work during yeah. COVID. <laughs> thank yeah. you. I'd like to show them how much we appreciate them. It's a concrete way of doing it. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item, uh, appointment of new city council member, attorney Mike Green. Um, you all received my memo. This is something that we really don't have a set forth procedure that has a lot of steps to it. Currently, we have 13 people who have applied for the council position. Um, it's going to take four votes for any one of these people to get um, elected. Um, the clerk will hand out ballots 
to the people who are in the room, three of them. And then there are three of you who will email the clerk with your choice. This is a secret ballot. You do not have to um, own up to voting for anybody. Um, we will um, kind of joking and call this vote till we drop. So we're going to vote till four people agree on one person to be the next council person. So I guess we start voting. I'll come pick the ballots up from the people. Thank you. You want to fold them? You can do that. I have received. I have received two emails. They. I need to receive one more email, please, from the Zoom participant. Seal it with wax. I still need one more email. Who's it? Sorry, never, never. Secret. Okay, I have received all the um, emails and the ballot. We have uh, one vote for Jeff Byerly, one vote for Lydia DeHaven, three votes for Robert Daubry, and one vote for Robert Reen. We will need to re-vote. So I will need each of you to re-vote, please, if you could, for uh, the next, for your candidate of choice. Is it only out of those ones that were voted for, or what's the process now? Sorry. You can vote for anybody you choose. Did you hear that, Amy? Vote for anybody. Um, I yeah, I did. Okay. I just, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I still need two more from the Zoom participants, please. I just need one. Oh, I just received that. Okay, we have a uh, for uh, people that have chosen Robert Daubry. We have one for Jeff Byerly, one from, for Lydia DeHaven. We have four votes for Jeff Daubry. Robert. So that is your choice. Robert Daubry. I mean, Robert Daubry, I'm sorry. Robert Daubry, I apologize. Okay. Yes, we have four votes for Robert Daubry from City Council. Do we need a motion? We do. Okay. Voted so you chose him, and I think no motion can be made to accept with any of the election results. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the election results for the city council member vacancy. Second. Lucero. Aye. Rainey. Muted. Medina. Aye. Yazi. Aye. Hopkins. Aye. Lady. Aye. Okay. Thank you, City Council, for your work on this.
Okay, that was a task. Uh, next item is the remaining CARES Act funding. City Manager John Doherty. Can I answer real quick? I need to make sure if I can make a vote on this at all. I'm friends with the EP of the chamber. So I just wanted to, and I have no, I have no interest in the matter, but I wanted to make sure all the council members are okay with my vote. Just the disclosure. Just the disclosure. Okay. Um, we received uh, CARES Act money um, several months ago. The city staff has been doing a made-up job spending the money on uh, projects and things to upgrade here at City Hall and around the city buildings. But we're running up against a brick wall that. Uh, I approved one more earlier this week for the courts, but I think everybody has everything they want. And uh, I'm getting pressure from um, DOLA to either spend the money or send it back so that the state can spend the money, uh, obviously in the front range. And so um, I'm requesting council's approval to um, one of two things, either turn the money over to Region 9, or we also have a, um, a request from the Chamber of Commerce for $100,000. Um, the only thing I will add to it is, um, two weeks ago, I did have one of the local restaurant owners come in, wanting to know what was gonna happen with the money, and I told her to contact Linda tomorrow, and she would be able to tell her the council wants to um, use that money. So there is money available. Um, I can't give you an exact amount, but it's somewhere between 100 and 200,000. And so it's up to council um, how you should proceed. And what date do we transfer that? I mean, do you want to try and spend some more or do you want to do it effective today? I'd like to go ahead and do it effective today. Um, it's going to take a while to get the applicant applications in, so if there's something else that we come up with, we still have a little time. I really think everything we need, we've already been purchased. Is this discussion or do we need a motion first? I believe you need a motion and second, and then we can discuss. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion to send the remaining CARES Act balance to Region 9 for distribution to protest businesses who have suffered from the pandemic and can show verifiable allowed and reimbursable expenses. Can I add something to that? What's the. We need a second. Oh. Second. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Okay, no, no Arlena. Uh, I wanted to add to the motion, but um, now I can't remember what it was. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll remember in a second. Uh, I just I do want to make a comment. I think um, the chamber has done some good things in the past, and I think they have some great ideas, they have some great ideas for the future. One of them is um, a lot of our businesses around here don't have websites. And that was one of their plans was to help businesses get a, a web presence so that they can at least have an email and uh, you know contact information. Damn, what the fuck's that? But um, I guess the other, you know, I don't know if it's appropriate to give them this CARES money, but we could encourage the businesses who get money through Region 9 or through their grants to become members of the chamber and, and kind of support the chamber indirectly that way, you know, remind them to, to pay their dues and to um, get the benefits of the chamber and keep them alive. I don't remember what my thing was. Uh, we should make the, 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 the stipulations for the money given to Region 9 open to nonprofits so the chamber and I, I completely agree with uh, 
Councilwoman Medina's comments about encouraging our our businesses to sign up with the chamber. But I, I just feel that I, I agree that it's hard to justify um, paying membership dues on um, which um, I mean, essentially pay the wages of would pay the wages of three people, which uh, I, I entirely expect the work that they're doing, but I want to be able to reach it, more people in this community and help these businesses stay open first, um, give them the money that they need to stay open first through the winter so that they can continue to grow their businesses. Um, and then also like taking into consideration um, why, why would we give fun like why would we give funds to the chamber and not to our own Mesa Verde country first? Is like a thought that I had as well. I would request one more thing to add for just some direction from council. You want to put a cap on mass that we give to one entity? Uh, I think we should have a cap. You would amend the motion then to include nonprofits, not for profits, and a cap of X dollars so you can come up with a cap. It would be an appropriate amount, John. I believe the county is using ten thousand dollars, and uh, the local, the cities around us are using five. But how much money did the county give for the three and nine? Up to nine hundred thousand. Okay, we only have a hundred thousand, so if we have a cap lower, it can impact more businesses. Ten thousand. With a cap of 5,000. So to be clear, um, we're talking about not giving it to the chamber, but then instead to region nine then. That's correct. Okay. Um, where did the, the, fa the talk about paying three people's salary come from? I guess I missed that part. So the, essentially the, Membership dues would pay the salaries of the three the three people for the chamber, which right now, I mean, there's currently the one who's who's doing the volunteer work. Um, but it's just hard to for me to judge. Like, and again, for the CARES guidelines, I feel to justify um, the membership dues um, under those guidelines. So the membership dues pay those three people's salary? I think that's what he ultimately said in the course of his presentation. Okay. And they were, what was that? Oh, it was, it was one full-time and two part-time. So okay. Cool. So they couldn't justify it as COVID? It would just be. Essentially, okay. we made several different proposals, ma'am, and one sort of kind of it was we're going to pay dues, which would help mm -hmm. the people because the chamber could do things. I think he then spoke also to the fact that this would help salaries and keep the chamber afloat, so it would can. And he didn't really have a specific COVID reference other than the people couldn't pay their dues because COVID had limited their income. But he was also unclear whether he was subsidizing existing members or creating new members or creating new In the actual packet from the, from the Cortez Chamber, uh, bullet point number two, provided Cortez Area Chamber of Commerce with operational money for 12 months. Um, provide employment for three paid staff members. Okay. Copy that. Thank you. Okay. Well, 
I would like to amend the motion then. Okay. Should I restate the whole thing? If you could yeah, restate everything. Okay, I'd like to amend the motion to um, send the remaining CARES Act balance to Region 9 for distribution to Cortez businesses and nonprofits who have suffered from the pandemic and can show verifiable allowed reimbursable expenses with a minimum of $500 or a maximum of $5,000. Second. Are we ready for a vote? Any more discussion? Any second? What was that motion again? Would you like to repeat that from, from yeah. Mr. Lucero? Sorry, it's hard to hear me. Um, I would like to uh, make a motion to send the remaining CARES Act balance to Region 9 for distribution to Cortez businesses and nonprofits who have suffered from the pandemic and can show verifiable, allowable, allowed and reimbursable expenses, requesting a minimum of $500 and a maximum of $5,000. Thanks. Medina? Aye. Yossi? Aye. Rainey? Aye. Huckins? Aye. Lucero? Nay. Lady? Aye. Vote passes five to one. Thank you. Uh, there are no draft resolution ordinances, uh, other items of business. Uh, Discussion on hiring another auditor, city manager Don, John Doherty. Sorry to speak this in on your council agenda, but there was no room on the work session, so I had to get it on here somewhere. Um, I put this on thing here uh, about 10 days ago in frustration that uh, our auditor at the bottleneck and he had uh, 2016 for roughly a month and my frustration was that we hadn't picked it up, and so we were getting further and further behind. Um, since I just got on there, I've been playing telephone tag with Tim Mayberry, our auditor, and I finally, we talked yesterday. Um, he told me that 2016 is just about ready to go out the door. He's done with it. He's got one change he needs to make on our end, and then it's done. He also said he has. 17 and 18 steel work already in hand. So if we change auditors, that's all out the door and the new auditors would have to start fresh again. He said that he was very impressed with um, the, con the uh, consultant we have hired to enter things that she is very familiar with, but the auditors expect when they get audit papers from us, and we um, were lacking in 2016, and he anticipates that 17 on will be much better in the future. So I guess my point is, if we were to go out for um, a larger company to do it, it's going to cost us considerably more money. Um, Tim has already done some of the field work, and that would be out the window because another auditor will not accept somebody else's field work, so they'd have to come in and do their own. I asked um, just a ballpark, we don't really know, but you know, how much would it cost us to get a big firm who would actually drop things when we get it done and pick it up and get it out the door? Um, it was estimated it would be an additional $50,000 on the, on the audit. And I'm not so sure that we could speed up any quicker. Um, because I would anticipate if we get 17 of Tim, he would have that done before we would feed through this big process. But I did want to present it to the council. Do you want to try it? Um, you can put it out the bid and see what happens and see what it's going to cost us. But this, after talking with Tim, I'm not sure, so sure we can speed it up more than we already are. He said, you know, 16 is done. Do I have 17? No. So I am still waiting on the city to get their portion of it. 
progress, maybe we should stick with him. Um, and you said that there's no way this, like, even if this were in somebody else's hands, it would take the same amount of time. If not longer. If we were to hire another auditor, they would have to start again from scratch. So it would take, theoretically take longer to get to the same point in the current year. The other thing to think about, John and I talked about this, but I don't know where it goes, is perhaps we're asking somebody to do a lot of work for a bid or a proposal that didn't anticipate this. I don't know if there's some sort of a monetary incentive that's possible to give for him to get this done quicker um, or how that would figure in. Um, I did ask that very question. Is it a matter of can we move to the top if we throw more money your way? He said, Money's not the issue, it's get it to me clean and I will get a lot as quickly as possible. That's good to know. That he has not built in time for 17 and 18, which we will fill. He just figured to pick that up and the audits is beginning to come. So, um, Drop him, we're going to get a bill from him also. And then the new auditor we would start from scratch where he's already picked up. But, you know. So, when does he get 17? As soon as we get it done. When does it get done? Uh, good question. Let's see more. Let's this is, how far along is um, I don't know how far along, but she, um, Lorraine, had some things prior to October and she said, I will keep my schedule clean. Because I know I have this to get done. So she's keeping her calendar clean to get us done. So we are the only one working on right now. So um, Tim's got confidence in her, I have confidence in her. She's going to work on it and get it done as quickly as we can. Everybody's well aware of how badly we want this done. And I told Tim, I'm aware that 17, 16, and 17 is going to be a terrible audit report. We're prepared for it. We just need to move forward. Would it be this year's money if we? 
Would it be this year's money if we did this? If we put out a bid and accepted it? I believe or they would be wouldn't be able to start building us until the new year. Okay, so this would have to be a part of our our budget. Yes. Okay. So we'd have to turn this around pretty fast if this is the route we went. Okay. I'd love to hear from other council members. I feel like we spoke with Ben about this a couple months ago and we decided to stay the course then um, discussing the money. Um, so that's kind of my thought is stay the course, give them the nudge. Um, don't pay more money for to get exactly where we are. Um, and then John, thank you so much for bringing this back up and being in conversation with the auditor and the point person. I'm good with just staying the course for now. Unless something crazy else comes up. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I think we should stay the course also. David Norley, you okay with just staying the course? Me? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say. The only thing is, uh, I don't know how many auditors we're going to go through to finally, you know, polish off the books, but what it takes, let's get her done. Do we need to make a vote or anything? No, we'll just stick with the auditors. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item, uh, let's see, there's uh, citizen participation. Are there any citizens would like to say something? Uh, go up to the podium, uh, state your name and address, make sure the, the mic is turned on. There's a little button, the green light will come on. Uh, make sure it's guys. Yep. Okay. Hi, my name is Robin and um, you need my address, is it? 667 South. Speak right into the mic so we can hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, my name is Robin Cam, and I'm um, at 667 South Oak Street. Um, I'm a, a new homeowner to town um, since November of last year. And um, I've seen a number of things that have concerned me in town, um, so much so that I've decided I need to come to the city council and speak on it. Um, <clears throat> so I have basically two, there's two, two directions that I want to, to address. I'll, I'll address the, the city side today. You guys put up, someone put up a post saying, please shop and buy in Cortez. You know, we need to support our local businesses. And this is kind of, this is what I put on the roadside in my response to that. It's too bad that certain elements make being on Main Street uncomfortable, loud, and filled with stinky, toxic air. It is not pleasant to shop, walk, or eat here, sadly. The new New Mexico is the most protected from the baloney. In fact, that leads me to my next concern. The near-death condition, the near-death conditions it takes to walk or be pushed in a wheelchair. For the same element inflicting their fumes and engines on everyone are often so busy zooming people that other people do not, that people are not stopping at all crosswalks. We already have three people mowed down in the last few weeks here. It was nearly five. How many more people have been nearly killed here? We were nearly smashed a few weeks ago leaving New Mexico. It is dangerous on foot in this town, especially for wheelchair or disabled folks. <clears throat> um, and it certainly doesn't feel like an inclusive, welcoming tourist town. Um, and then there's the other problems that is there are certain, um, certain shops are still putting obstacles in the walk path. I think everybody 
consider your obligations to the community or to people outside your stores. The sidewalks in Cortez, especially on Main Street, are tortured to go down in a wheelchair because they are crooked and wobbly and, and they're blocked with all kinds of obstacles. And the other thing, <clears throat> um, and the other thing that I find with local stores here is that often people have to endure attitude and pettiness that is not tolerated in corporate businesses. I'm super big time for supporting local mom and pop businesses, but this town makes doing that very difficult. And we're beginning to drive out of town to shop now because of, because of that. And, and unfortunately, the racism is, is palpable here. And so, and that goes to my next discussion. And that's what happened on Saturday. Um, this, we are a border reservation town. We have responsibilities to be inclusive and welcoming to our neighbors. I'm very disappointed that the city did not make an effort to do a, a celebration for Indigenous Peoples Day yesterday or any time this weekend. There was one event that was, that was hosted and it was over at the Cultural Center. There were Native American people. Everyone who was speaking was Native American. One person was so intimidated to go in and speak because of the hate speech that was going on outside that he chose to stay in the car and I had to speak for him because he was so frightened for his own safety because there were people with guns encircling the cultural center on Indigenous Peoples Day. This is an international event. This is not a United States event. This is not a political thing. This is something that we acknowledge across this planet. And I'm very disappointed that the city that I live in being exactly next to a reservation and surrounded in native country, that there is not any acknowledgement for Indigenous Peoples Day. This could have been very, this could have been very blown up. We could really get a lot of tours in here. Jobs are dying here. We need, and we, I'm disappointed in the airport, to be honest, but we need to look at being more inclusive, and that, uh, I'm just really disappointed that you guys didn't do anything for me to So, thank you. Oh, and people were unsafe on Saturday. It was very unsafe. Uh, that's the people zooming up and down and believing they have the right to harm people. It's just not okay. So. Thank you for comments. Uh, any other comments for <coughs> citizens? Anybody on that? Any comments from Bob? Do we have a Zoom? Comments? Yeah, we have one. Two. Tiffany Greer and Jordan Romero. Okay. Uh, Tiffany, here. She is now. Tiffany here. She's got to unmute her mic. Unmute your mic. Okay, you can hear me now, right? Yeah. I would like to comment on the last speaker. Um, Patriots were invited to the indigenous um, event that happened, we did not surround the entire place. We were not all packing guns, which, you know, granted is our second amendment right. And we can carry concealed, we can carry open. We stood by, the newspaper even noted that we stood by, we listened, we watched, we were invited in by the security people to come in and to listen and listen quietly. And that is exactly what we did. We came in to show support of the indigenous people. I have a huge disgust that BLM made this all about them packing around their signs, um, promoting Black Lives Matter when this was supposed to be about indigenous people. Whether or not a person carries a gun open or concealed, 
does not make them an endangerment or a threat. And the particular person that was just speaking was quoted by the newspaper is calling us white supremacists over an open mic. We had no intention of harm. We were there to show support for the indigenous people. So her account of things that happened was completely inaccurate. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, is there another caller with a comment? Bill, is there another? Jordan. Jordan Romero. Jordan. Okay, Jordan, uh, can you unmute your mic? Make your comments? Yes, uh, thank you so much. First of all, I just want to thank um, City Council for your long, hard work today. Um, I really appreciate all the work you are doing. Um, so I was originally gonna comment on something a little different, but feel compelled um, to thank the first speaker um, for sharing her experience um, and sharing some information about um, how perhaps the city could be a little more welcoming to folks who are differently abled and in wheelchairs. I think we're all pretty familiar with the dangers of Main Street and people driving very quickly. And I'm not really sure what can be done about that, but um, I really appreciate that person coming up and speaking about that, um, as well as speaking about the racism and um, diversity issues in Cortez. Um, she's totally right. Um, I was at the event on Saturday and um, the Patriots did in fact, surround the area. Um, we're sort of posted on corners. Um, many had weapons and were extremely intimidating. Um, and I actually have video of Tiffany running down the street after a vehicle trying to record it. So they were actively intimidating folks. And I think that that needs to be recognized. And I really appreciate the bravery of the first person who spoke um, to share her experience. Um, and what I was going to initially speak about was in regards to the COVID, uh, the CARES Act funding. I think that what you all decided tonight is a really great opportunity to support local businesses. I would ask that the council consider adding an amendment to um, sort of whatever plan is created to um, not give funding to local businesses and nonprofits who are non-compliant with masking orders. There are many, many businesses within Cortez who are not enforcing state mandated law to mask. Um, and that is clearly negligent. We know that masks um, help slow the spread of COVID-19. And if we want to keep our businesses open, masking is a very reasonable ask. So I would ask that um, city council um, keep that in mind when creating whatever processes are needed to, um, to award struggling businesses and nonprofits in Cortez. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, Jordan. Are there any other comments online? No, that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, there are no city attorney's report, no city manager report. No, wait. I do have a request of counsel. Uh, heard of the historical society here tonight asking for $5,000. I did not hear any direction from counsel, so that's a dead issue unless I get direction that you want to put that on a future agenda or talk about, or you want to decide tonight. Um, I did check with Ben, whether there was still the grant money that you guys give out every year. And there is $5,000 in that if you want to throw it to the historical society. The other clarification point, they also put into the grant cycle for money besides this 5,000, just to make clarify that. But they are double dipping. Okay. Uh, so you're putting in for five thousand dollars in the grant cycle. I don't. I didn't ask how much they were asking for in the grant cycle, but I did mention this, and she said they are also putting in for the grant cycle. Okay. So, 
Uh, but when you say there is five thousand dollars in the grant cycle, does that mean we didn't get enough applications to use all of the money we put aside for grants? I, I did. I did not attend that meeting, but I believe you had the same ones, or the council had the same ones they did every year, but they were cutting back. And um, I believe I, at least I was told, council was holding some back because they get request throughout the year and if they give it all out at once it's all gone and so things like this or the high school coming in we can go to the state or something um the, the city still has some money that council wants to contribute to those kinds of things they can do that but we are you know we're essentially got two months left in this year and if you wanted to make that contribution there is that money there So, so they they they're going to put in for the grant cycle, so we we can award them money at that time. John, is this last month, last year's grant cycle that's already been spent? They kept five, and so the next year's grant cycle we haven't had that meeting yet. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So you would be using this money, which what it was exactly kept for somebody who came in late and needed five thousand dollars. You could give it out of the grant cycle money that's left. If you were so choosing, if you're so choosing, correct. But I did not hear any direction, so I didn't know if that was to die or if you want this further discussion. The direction was that. And the grant grant. Applications up to five? I uh, don't, Linda, help me out. I don't know that there's any cap in the grant cycle. I thought there was a five. I could be wrong. There is a cap, um, but it's really discussable for you guys to decide. And it's for 2021. Those checks would not go out until January of 2021. So that is really for you guys to decide. Um, a lot of times it has to do with how many people that apply and how much money that they're asking for. But the 5000 you have left can go out tomorrow. So we have $5,000 now that we can give to the historical society. If the council so chooses, yes. Okay. Well, look, my, my thing is the, we're able to get that give them money once, I mean, on the grant cycle part. And I think I should uh, look to go for the grant cycle for the next time, I mean, for through the city. But uh, I think that 5,000, whatever, if we have left, I think we got to keep it for a rainy day because we still got two months left, so. Wait, to be clear, they haven't been awarded any money yet, right? I think grant, already, grant or otherwise. I, I think they got some money from. Uh, I think it was what is that? What's that thing called, John? Well, we grant uh, nonprofits and all that. What's that called, Mike? But anyway, um, I think they already already distributed the money for the year already. Then that we have another thing come up for the end of the year for next year, because I think the checks go out first of the year. They applied for the next year's grants where they, they did not get any money from the 2020 grant cycle. That I believe that is that. So they would be applying for money in 2021, but they're also asking for the $5,000 you guys are saving for some. Yeah, I understand that, but I still think that they had applied for the next cycle, make it the other nine profits also. Uh, an equal share for everybody. Okay. Orly says no, but I'm still have five other members. If we get forward, to, if you want to proceed, we can go forward. Otherwise, this will die on the line tonight. Or we could add I guess I need a little bit more clarification on like what does that pot look like? Is there exactly five thousand dollars left in it? Will it all be reverted back? 
you know, at the end of the year? Um, why, why would we be wanting to hang on to this money if there's uh, a museum in need? What would be the benefit of hanging on? Like, who would we, we be hanging on for? Another question would be, too, what is their timeline for their match grant? Mm -hmm. So maybe we should find out, let's find out that question first, and then we can decide next meeting. Yeah, can we put this on the next meeting agenda? Sure. Okay. That's, that's so couldn't we task you with figuring out when their match grant is needed? Or their when they need the 5,000, yeah. the, really the 20,000 they're asking for. Because, right, they asked the county for money last week and they were asking us. So, when do they need that money by? I believe it was sooner the better because it was for the AV room they're going to need before they open up. Okay. Yeah, you can send it. So, so, do we have four council members that want to add it to the agenda next meeting? And yes, please. Okay. I'd say wait till the next meeting. We will till the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other reports, John? I'm sorry, that was it. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Uh, city Council Committee reports. Anyone from any city council meetings? Any? Early, David. I'm here. I'm here. I surprisingly got oh. me. Okay, no one. Oh, I just have one quick thing to say. Okay, go ahead, Rachel. Uh, I just want to exp express my appreciation for my fellow council members. This is not an easy job, and I appreciate all of that you guys contribute. Um, and I'm glad that you, we're all a team here. Um, and I'm excited to add Robert to this and get to know you and um, see what you can contribute to the city. And then I also want to show appreciation for the city staff, for John and Linda, for all the work they do for us, um, and Mike, um, and, and Cortez staff. I mean, this has been a really unique year, and we're all extra stressed and Things are confusing and up in the air, but um, you know, I just want to thank everyone for you know being dedicated to this community. So, so thank you. I agree um, with what Rachel said, and, and uh, yes, I agree. It's been a very tough year, a lot of tough decisions, and uh, we really appreciate all the work all the staff has done and, and the council. Mike, can I say just one thing? Yes. I would just like to thank council support for our reconnect lunch, for coming and meeting our employees. We really appreciate you guys coming and just mingling with them. I think we have a lot of people come in that they were there. We are going to do another one in November, and I welcome all of you to come and, and meet our employees. It means a lot to us. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, uh, we had one of the best turnouts for that day that we have ever had here. The employees were extremely appreciative of the council for doing that last year. And then had great food, great entertainment. It's nice mingling with the people. And, and pickleball is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so there's before I workshop. Uh, Okay, this, this, this afternoon, this evening, we presented a presentation by Ann Brown regarding the Montezuma Heritage Museum. Also, Mesa Verde Country update by Ellie Kirkpatrick. Uh, monthly finance update by Ben Burkett. Burkett. Uh, we discussed the master streets plan by Tracy Hughes. We discussed proposed Montezuma land use code we discussed the sick leave for COVID-19. We discussed the remaining CARES Act funding, discussed trick or treating this year, and we had discussion on city council vacancy. Uh, and uh, that's it. And uh, is there any more comments? Okay, call this meeting adjourned.
Thank you. Mm.